the wood on fruit trees and grapevines that produces the fruit is young wood, usually two to three year old wood. In order to keep the tree or the vine constantly producing that new fruiting wood, you have to prune them. Otherwise they get old and overloaded with non-productive, tired old wood. And so fundamentally that's why you prune is to keep the tree constantly renewing what we call its bearing surface. You also have to prune because you're squeezing these trees in really tightly. And if you just let them sprawl, they would grow into each other. So containing them in their allotted space, which is determined by how closely together you plant them and what kind of a trellis system you're using. Things happen to wood, branches break, they get diseases. So when you prune, you're taking out damaged or diseased wood. The fundamental thing you're trying to do is to prevent dense shade from forming anywhere in the tree or the vine. They'll keep growing branches and branches and they get all packed in together and they all have leaves. And so you have this dark, dank space inside the tree or the vine where you'll get moldy fruit and, and not very good fruit. So you're constantly trying to kind of open the canopy up so that you get good air circulation, good light penetration. You can prune any time of year. Typically for tree fruits around here, the best time of year to do it is late winter, or early spring. But if you start pruning trees and then we have a severe freeze, you're more likely to have cold damage on the trees that you prune because the ice kind of gets into the wood at the pruning cut. If you start pruning too late, then the buds have already started to swell and the tree has already moved a lot of reserves into those developing buds and so you're really kind of depriving the tree of a lot of resources that it did a lot of work to accumulate. So that's not good. Typically the window for deciduous tree fruits around here is February, March. Those two months are the ideal months. There's a lot of different decision rules for pruning. One rule is that any side branch that's more than half the diameter of the main branch should be removed. And that's so the trees don't get overgrown. And you typically want to do no more than two or three of those really big cuts in any one tree in any one year. Because if you cut them back really hard, then you get what I call an angry tree, which is where it just kind of comes back at you because you took too much of the growing points off it. And so you'll get a whole bunch of really vigorous vegetative shoots that totally defeats your purpose in pruning. And then next year you got twice as much work when you prune them. So what I always tell pruners is start with the big cuts. Every tree should have two or three kind of strategic, fairly big cuts every year, but no more than that. And you want to make some of them in the top of the tree, especially if the top is getting too big or you're starting to get shade up there and some of them in the bottom of the tree. Usually the bottom of the tree is where you got these big branches that are just getting too big. They're over into the next tree. When you've made those big cuts, then you can either go to your loppers or just use your hand shears and then you do what I call detail pruning. And you can spend as much time as you have to spend on the detail pruning because almost every tree that's more than eight or 10 years old, it will be helpful to make hundreds of those little detail pruning cuts with your hand shears. But if you've got 3,000 trees to prune, you know, you got to keep moving. Even a small apple tree will have thousands of flowers and usually no more than 10% of those flowers will actually set fruit. And that's still way more apples than that tree should have and more than it can properly size and ripen or you'll have broken branches and things. Fruit load management, thinning, crop load adjustment, one of the things that you're doing when you prune is taking out some of the old wood that tends to produce lots of not very good apples, small. Uh, so pruning is kind of the first thing that you do for crop load adjustment or thinning. Um, and then there's a lot of different ways to chemically thin apples, and that's a technology that was developed mostly at Cornell in the 30s and 40s. And uh, there are things that you can spray on the trees that will cause them to, uh, to drop some of the fruit. And fortunately, the fruit that is most prone to drop off is the fruit that is the least well attached to the tree, which is the smaller fruit. 
the ideal number on an apple tree is every other spur, and the spurs are these short shoots that produce most of the flowers and fruit. And if every other spur has one apple, then you, typically that's your, your ideal crop load for that tree. And the reason for that is that the spur that has no apple this year is kind of on vacation, and next year that'll produce an apple, whereas the one that has an apple this year often will take a vacation next summer. So you're kind of going back and forth. So there's pruning, and then there's training, which is trying to develop a particular form in that plant. And there's probably a hundred different training systems for apple trees or grapevines. That's the part that's kind of like an art where you have this mental image of, I want this tree to be, you know, sort of conical and to be tapered toward the top and to have no branches below my knees. And every one of the trees is different than every other one, even though they're all the same clone. So you have to kind of try to visualize that training system or form that you want to maintain or establish in the tree. And that's really the, the fun part of it is how do we get from this, which is what it is, to that, which is what we want it to be. Training, some of that is making those big cuts because that's where you're trying to establish or maintain that form in the tree. A lot of training is, is actually, uh, you're not cutting at all, you're bending branches down, you're putting spreaders in them to bring them down horizontal. Usually they're too vertical, they're too upright, so you're going to get a crowded, shaded center in the tree. The old thing would be cut them off, but every time you cut them off, you know, you've got to regrow them, and so it's really much more efficient, especially in a young tree, just bring them down flat. And you have to do it early in the year. We use these big cedar sticks. There's two footers and three footers and they have a notch in the end and cedars are very soft wood. It's like a splint, basically. Getting the branch flat will really slow down how rapidly it's growing at the end and it'll tend to, to have spurs and flowers develop on the flat part of the branch because it's now it's in a, instead of being here where it's shaded, it's like this and so it's got a lot of sunlight on those buds which will tend to make them form flowers. Pruning I do almost entirely myself. It's hard work. You can't do it halfway. It takes attention. They don't just grow that way without a lot of human effort. 